fine. Uh, say Thor Ragnarok. Like uh, Thor just came down and he's legit Thor. Cool. He's just as hilarious. Yeah, it would be. I was just talking to the lady before that. He's coming like, check out these biceps. Yeah. And then he does a lightning thing. He's like, by the way, I'm Thor. Check out my video games and my movies. I think you guys are doing a good job. Going yeah. back to Asgard now. See you later. How you doing? My name's Ty. I'm Jacob. Jacob! Wonderful name. Uh, so normally what I do is I set up a... Uh... Hey, I'm Ty. Nice to meet you. Hi. <laughs> so I normally set up a table uh -huh. in like parks or whatever in Lexington. Uh -huh. And um, what happens is it sign says, let's chat about whatever you want. Right. Sometimes I'll have religious people come up to me uh -huh. and they'll talk to me or try to sell me on the religion. And I'll ask questions about how they got to their you know, faith and the foundation behind it. And, you know, by the time we get back up from that foundation, they're a little bit less confident yeah. about the position. Yeah, a little street epistemology. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, okay, so you already know. <laughs> I already know, yeah. You already know the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. um, are you an atheist? Yeah. I never get a chance to talk to other atheists. I'm an atheist myself. People how I've met are really ap uh, apprehensive about using the A word. Uh, and so I thought this is a good opportunity to just have a chance to talk with like-minded individuals, right. see if the method works as well. Would you mind if we tried something like that out? That's fine. Jacob, five minutes. Um, and if you want to talk longer, that's fine with me too. <laughs> so how did you become an atheist, if you don't mind asking? Uh, years and years of looking back into the history of the church and how the Bible was formed and all that. <laughs> like I'm all good. We're bit. all good. Okay. Yeah? Um, I grew up Catholic. Um, even thought about going into the priesthood at one point in time. Really? But within a year and a half, two years The college was too tight? <laughs> but, yeah, after, you know, I, I got to the point where, you know, I really wanted to look into what I was getting myself into, and then that's actually what turned the tables. And, did you say you actually like maybe studied the Bible? As yeah, part started, of started studying the Bible, the history of the church, um, the the history of how the Bible was formed, sure. and put together, and all the, the bias and, and mistranslations sure. and all that kind of stuff. That so, was a big step for me as well. Yeah. Like when I was hurt, I felt like um, I didn't have as much faith in the book mm -hmm. because I was beginning to learn about ethics in college and stuff and like yeah. actual systems and not just like a list of rules. Yeah. And when I went back to the Bible, I'm like, whoa, now that I'm looking at this critically, a lot of this stuff isn't holding up. Yeah. But was that it for you or was there anything else that like made um, you go like, oh? Well, it wasn't like that. I mean, it was a, a period of time. It, it took, I mean, I, I started questioning it, you know, but like I said, you know, within a couple of years, I'd gone from wanting to go into the priesthood to I don't want anything to do with this. And okay. then it took a long time for me to actually come out and say it. I mean, I didn't even say anything to my family until a couple of years ago, and that was like, oh, let's see, from 18 to 40, roughly, so 22 years it, it took me to, to get to the point where I could actually tell my folks that I was. Don't feel bad. So. <laughs> Don't feel bad. It took me about, I've only been an atheist for like maybe about three years, four years now, uh -huh. and it took me about a good year before I can have that conversation with my mom, yeah. and just be completely comfortable with that. Thankfully, she also switched out of religion as well. Uh, she jumped into a Jehovah Witness program, though. But when she was out, when she was like doing that jump, I was like, hey, mom, I'm also out too. I'm not going to be a Jehovah Witness. But, you know, right. respect. That stuff was crazy, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And um, I'm wondering right now, I think a lot of theists would be interested in, is um, deeply held beliefs that atheists have. I think there's a lot of parallels. Like... I'm noticing you haven't gone around killing people now that you lost your faith in God. What's keeping you from doing that? Like, where do you get your moral scruples from if you don't have a religious belief? Um, just the um, sense that, I mean, we all live together, we all got to work together, you know, and, and need to look out for each other. So, I mean, going around and, you know, killing people or, you know, treating other people bad, and I mean, that's not good for humanity as a whole. And, you know, if people would actually read the Bible, they would see that the the God of the Bible actually condones a lot of inhumane things. At least, you know, that, what we consider inhumane. You know, murder, rape, you know, misogyny, infanticide, genocide, you know, all that kind of stuff. That he's supposed to be such a loving God, but that's not the case at all. And, and I guess they try to to explain away or just kind of like, oh, that's Old Testament or you know whatever. And, and, you know, Jesus is supposed to change all that well. <laughs> if you read it, it was in Matthew, Jesus said that 
it's not here to uh, change the laws. You sure, know? sure, so. sure. Uh, he also, I think Jesus even comes back and says, what's Caesar's is Caesar's, what's God's God. So uh -huh. he's, not, he's not changing any of those Old Testament laws. Himself. Right, now, yeah. I'm wondering, though, what if there was another God that was out there that just didn't have as good publicity? And he was like, no, yeah, treat other people well, be good in the community. Well, where don't is, kill people. Where is this God then? I mean, I don't remember if it was um, Arn Rao or Matt Gill Honey One said that uh, that a God that, that doesn't present itself in some meaningful way is the same as being non-existent. So, mm. you know, if that's the case, then, then where is you know that God or even the God of the Bible? I mean, there's no, you know... There's still no evidence to believe. Yeah, in God there's like no that. evidence to believe that of any of that. So. If you did have evidence, would you believe in a God like that? Um, Not necessarily worship or follow that God, but at least believe that God existed. Um, I guess we're gonna have to figure out what that evidence would be. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Say scientific. Well, say there was a reliable scientific method that was discovered maybe a couple of years from now to test the supernatural. They're able to determine an agent that corresponded pretty well to like some holy books ultimate agent but okay. it's not a question of whether you would worship it it's just would whether you now I be more it's like oh okay well there. fine uh, say Thor Ragnarok like uh, Thor just came down and he's <laughs> legit Thor cool he's just as hilarious <laughs> yeah it would be I was just talking to the lady before that he's coming like check out these biceps yeah. and then he does a lightning thing he's like by the way I'm Thor check out my video games and my movies uh, I think you guys are doing a good job going yeah. back to Asgard now see you later <laughs> and he's and he'll come back and you can call him whatever you want uh, and he does like shows with Regis Philbin or if he's still doing shows <laughs> yeah. would you at least believe in the God then but not necessarily like worship them or would you like go through the whole process of like crap I gotta bring out my Nordic history book now and start reading up on <laughs> Odin and stuff like well, that well I guess I'll worry more about that if and when it ever happens which I don't know a whole lot of trust that's going to yeah there. I'll cross that bridge when it gets there but until then yeah, until such evidence is presented then I'm not going to waste my time worrying about it let so. me throw something out at you um, one last weird tangential question what would make you worship a god at this point do you have any criteria that would make you are you saying you're absolutely never going to do that again or do, is there anything that would make you be like okay I understand now thank you for explaining that to me <laughs> I still think it would depend on the God and the evidence for what type of God it is. I mean, but even then, you know, like what's presented for for what heaven's supposed to be. Sure. You know, why would you want to spend the eternity, you know, worshiping, you know, constantly, you know, what this one God has always done and, and been for you and blah 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 and given you. And, I mean, why would you want to spend eternity doing that? Sure. I mean, I'd still want to exist, you know, in some form, you know, and be able to enjoy whatever there is, not just, you know, the cost of servitude to... <laughs> sure, 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 God, sure, so. sure. I thought, we were, and I was talking about this before, like, the quality of being worshipped, of the quality of wanting to be worshipped is nothing that anyone that was worthy of worship would want. Mm -hmm. So I would think, like... I, it's hard for me to think of a scenario where someone's so good that they want to be worshipped. Like, that seems to be a completely diametrically opposed sort of quality. Right. So anyone who's like, I'm so good and worship me, is either not as good as they're claiming to be. Because they're like, I want you to love me more than anyone else and, like, dedicate your life. Like, no one who's actually good would want that, as far as I can see. Right. But it's hard for me to come up with any other characteristics of a god that is worth worshiping. Right. That's also present, and I know I don't have evidence to support that. Right. I guess one last thing. Yeah. Um, so, logically, you're able to come to terms with the fact that there's no god. What about like the emotional aspects? Do you have any fear that you're dealing with? Any guilt? Or and, and you were talking about like coming out to your, your parents about this idea. Was mm. there? What was that apprehension that's based on? Yeah. I... I'd say there was some apprehension about that with my family because, I mean, they're all religious. And, and my dad, since he's retired, has become super religious. Mm. And actually, we don't even speak to each other anymore. Wow. So, I mean, whenever I told him that I was atheist, whenever it finally got to that point, yeah. like, he just told me on the spot. So, you know, we haven't spoken since. You know, and that's on his choice. Sure. You know, so, I, mean, I still consider him as my father, you know, but he doesn't want anything to do with me, so, you know... If his God is, you know, that important that his family doesn't mean anything to him anymore, then, you know, I, I really can't 
change that. Sure. You know, and that's totally something up to him that he's going to have to work through for himself. So. Even though it's entirely on him, it still affects you. It does. You know, I mean, emotionally, I mean, you know, it is my father. Yeah. You know, but yeah, it's his choice. And I mean, you know, it's, I'm sad that, you know, it's come to that between us, but it's not my fault. <laughs> what would you, you say know? to someone who's like listening to that and like, well, all you have to do is just believe again? <laughs> it's not that simple. I know. I know. <laughs> do you think it's possible to choose what you believe? And I know I'm asking questions even though I said it would be the last one but is it it's not possible to choose what you want to believe in a sense like once you're, you're trying to be convinced that something is true and without the evidence you can't get to that same place that's such a heavy thing though uh, I'm sorry to hear that it's been a few years now so I mean, yeah it's, it's I would say it's easier to deal with but I just I don't know I try not to worry about it as much sure so, Do you think he's having the same mental hurdles? Like, I'm I'm afraid. I'm scared. I can't I can't open up to my son because I have all this weight on me. I think the love between a father and son should be able to like. You think so? Yeah. You know, I mean, we weren't real close most of the time anyway. But, okay. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going through his head anymore. Okay. To be honest with you. Okay. But it sounds like you got a good head on your shoulders right now. Yeah, I'm happy. Yeah. I mean, I don't need to worship God to be happy. You know, sure you and, don't. and do good things for other people. I mean, you know, I, I still go out and, you, and um, we help at the homeless shelters. and, and uh, A lot of people appreciate that, too. You know, and, and I do a, a winter handout. I have a, I run a group back home, too. So, okay. I mean, yeah, we do a lot of you know, social good What's stuff. the name of the group? I can plug um, it. Tri-State Area. Area? Yeah, Atheists and Skeptics. Okay, Atheists and Skeptics. Atheists and Skeptics. Thank you so much for all the work that we did. Thank you. I had a good chat. Yeah, I did too.